So thank you very much, um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, for the opportunity uh, given the New Patriotic Party to discuss our manifesto with you, our distinguished audience, to enable you uh, make informed uh, decisions as we gradually move towards the 2020 general elections. As you know, this is the manifesto of the new patriotic party led by our president and our presidential candidate, President Nana Adodanko Akufuado, with his running mate, Alhaji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. But here to discuss the manifesto with you, as earlier mentioned by Senor Hosi, uh, my colleagues, uh, Egbert Fabel from the Petroleum Commission, Hassan Tampuli from the National Petroleum Authority, and Edwin Provincial from the uh, BOST, Bulk Oil Storage and Transportation Company. And so let me go uh, straight to the slides that I have for, for you. To explain why our manifesto uh, is that generic is that in 2016, we had very specific items we wanted to, to address. And uh, having gone into government, we started addressing most of those specific issues. And so for us, government is a continuum. And therefore, we are committed to continuing with the implementation of what we started from 2017, all the specifics which I'll present to you so that you can judge for yourselves. I'm talking about our track record. And we want to build on that track record. And this is why our commitments towards the next four years are more generic. Because they speak to the specific issues that we presented in 2016, which we are implementing uh, uh, so far. So as far as the presentation, yes, we're going to look at the reality that we met when we came into government. I'll look at what we promised uh, on the power side, the power sector, what we've done. I'll look at petroleum, what we promised and what we, we've done. And then I'll present to you um, the, the future. So to start with the power sector, this were the issues that we came to meet. Dumso, which became a major feature of our national life uh, in, in the country. Debts, many serious financial challenges afflicting the, the sector, high cost of power as a result of which uh, industries had to relocate to, to other countries where they thought they could get cheaper uh, power. Then, of course, the issue of excess capacity the then government, the government we took over from, signed many, many power contracts, committing Ghana to excess capacity. And uh, contracts that were signed, uh, as we may have heard, are all take or pay contracts, which means that whether you are con consuming or not consuming, once they declare availability, you have to pay, pay for that. And so that excess capacity uh, is not just about the fact that there is excess of generation capacity, but also the commitment to pay, the payments that you make for the excess capacity that you are not using. So these were the issues that we came to, to meet. But we have been addressing most of these issues, and the reality is that Dumso was a major issue for our country. Apart from the fact that there was no power for industry, we also had other social and economic effects of doing so. Um, hospitals had challenges operating on their patients and people had to die. Um, you know, small scale businesses like the welders, the hairdressers, they all had challenges. Some of them had to shut down. You know, the impact on their economy, economic growth was also uh, quite uh, are significant in terms of des decelerating the, the growth of the, of the economy. Uh, according to ISA, 
the effect of doing so on our economy was about 2%, two percentage points. And that was quite, quite significant. If you are growing at 5% average and two percentage point, you know, it's, it's had, had to be uh, uh, foregone because of the, the dooms or the effect of dooms or then, then that's quite significant. The accompanying effects of unemployment, you know, and then also um, ad, ad development of other sectors of the economy uh, were also challenges we, we need to remember. But there has been debate as to whether we, we, we ended them so or the NDC ended them so. And I'm sure they may have mentioned that when they appeared before you. But this is a confession by the then Deputy Minister for Power, uh, my brother Abla Jinapo. And this was a confession by October, as of 26 October 2016, when he conceded that Dumso was there, but the, the, the cause, according to them, was financial which is an issue the MPP had been drumming, trying to drum home for, for, for several years. You know, we had always said it's financial. They don't have money to buy uh, fuel to, to fire the, the, the plants. There, there was that admission towards the end. But even when we came to, into government, in the first three to six months, we also had challenges because you were not just going to uh, stop doing so overnight. You needed to put in place some measures. And so we had to, first of all, address the financial challenge of finding money to buy uh, fuel to, to fire our, our plants. I mean, as you know, Nigeria gas was erratic. In most, most of the time, the gas was not coming. Uh, the NDC did not plan well to put in a mechanism to flow our gas from uh, the west to the east, to the east around Tema, where we have most of our generation uh, our capacity. But we had to find the money to buy the fuel to be able to, to fire the, 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 the plant. Then, of course, the debt, the financial challenges, uh, several billions of dollars of debts were handed over to us, most of them legacy debts. And this is just one example, ECG debts. What government owed to ECG was just 2.6 billion Ghana cities. And it's significant because where government owes, you know, state company, then government is disabling the company from uh, performing. And then you turn around and accuse them of not performing yet you are holding a significant portion of, of the debt, which is suffocating the company. And so this is very significant, and we need to pay attention uh, to, to that. Then tariffs, electric tariffs were unaffordable. You know, cost of electricity was very high. And you could uh, relate to the number of times power tariffs were increased between 2010 and 2016 which led to an accumulated increase in tariffs of about 268%. Uh, uh, you know, it wasn't possible for uh, most companies to operate under such high levels of, of, of tariffs. And so cost of tariff was a major issue, and we wanted to, to address that. Then the excess capacity that I talked about, to the extent that 40% of the uh, power purchase agreements signed, you know, the take or pay contracts, uh, is not being uh, used. That, that is, that's, quite, that's quite worrying. Ghana now pays almost 500 million U.S. dollars annually for capacity that we are not using, but which we are committed uh, to. If you look at the statistics further, you, you, you have an installed capacity of about 5,000 megawatt, dependable capacity of about 4,700 megawatt. So if you take the uh, peak demand, all-time high peak demand, which is about 2,700 uh, megawatt. Then you're talking about 1,700 megawatt of excess capacity relative to dependable capacity. Now, if you take it against available capacity, which is about 3,700 megawatt, then you're talking about excess capacity of 600 megawatt. That's, that's quite significant. That we don't use, we don't consume, and yet we have to pay uh, for, for, for that. So what have we done so far? Over the last four years, we have been trying to address the financial challenges in the sector, you know. And so we promised regular payment of outstanding bills to IPPs. We promised to clear the government indebtedness uh, to the state companies, you know, particularly ECG. Uh, we pledged to implement the cash waterfall uh, mechanism. And we have been able to do uh, most of this over the, the last four, four, four years. For example... Uh, we now pay the IPPs regularly, although they are not getting all they want. Payments are being made to, to IPPs. Uh, we have also cleared the government indebtedness to ECG. The $2.6 that I showed earlier, 
the, it, it kept increasing, you know, because the debts were sitting down, interest accumulating. We have had to clear that debt. We have even paid more. We've given them four billion uh, Ghana cities more than the, the, the amount we owe them so that we could inject liquidity into the operations of ECG for ECG to be able to perform and perform better. Uh, we have also started the implementation of the cash waterfall mechanism. As of April 2020, the, 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 the mechanism uh, started operating. And the cash waterfall mechanism is just to ensure that all the monies collected by ECG are, are distributed you know, to all the players along the chain, such so that you will have regular cash flow and, and also to prevent accumulation of, of new debts. Because of the debts we've accumulated over the, uh, the, the, the legacy period, you know, the, the industry was brought on its knees. And so having a cash waterfall mechanism will ensure that the fuel suppliers are paid, the generators are paid, the distributors are paid, you know, so that they have cash, cash flow uh, all, the, all the time. On keeping the lights, the lights on, a number of measures were implemented by, by us, ensuring availability of fuel for generation, implementation of what I just talked about, the cash waterfall mechanism, improved grid system. Uh, we also completed the reverse uh, gas flow. And I'm, I'm wondering uh, why the NDC continues to say that they, it was their project. Uh, unfortunately, when Dumso was affecting all of us, it took the World Bank to suggest to the government then that they needed to do a reverse flow of the gas because we had so much of our gas stranded in the west and yet you have power plants in the east struggling for fuel you know, to, 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 to operate. And, and, and so they couldn't do that. Even though it was so important, they preferred to buy fuel. And, and so the, the, the gas that was stranded, uh, if we used it, if we did that reverse flow project to use it, we would have been saved of the money they used to buy uh, our fuel. You know. uh, also, the effect of Dumso on all of us was not particularly of interest to them because if they were interested, they would have done this project to bring gas from the West, which was stranded, and, and most of the gas in, 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 in the West was free gas. They didn't do that. It took President Akufado to come and do the reverse flow uh, project, which now allows us to flow gas from, from west, the stranded gas from, from the west to the east for use by the power plants in, in Tema. This will save us uh, the money we use to buy uh, fuel, but this will also ensure that we have cheaper you know, power because we are going to now use gas, more gas in the, in the east. I'm, I'm talking about Tema to produce uh, electricity. Then you also have increased use of renewables. Relocation of, the car, relocation of the car power ship to, to Takuradi so that we could use the part of the standard gas in the, in the west while we flow the rest to uh, Tema. We didn't understand why a plant like that, which is mobile, could not be located in the west to use the stranded gas, the stranded and free gas, but had to be put in Tema, where you had to buy heavy fuel oil to operate. That was poor planning in our view, you know, but this has been corrected uh, by President Akufuado. Then we are also implementing our overall program for the energy sector because we think that over the next five years, we should be able to bring the sector into a strong financial help. And that is what we term as the energy sector recovery uh, program. Ensuring affordability, I mentioned the high cost of electricity at the time we came in. We had to ensure that electricity was more affordable to the people of Ghana. And so we started off in 2017 by reducing levies on electricity. For example, we reduce the National Electrification Scheme levy from 5% to 2%. We reduce the street lighting levy from 5% to 2%. And then we also, in 2018, reduce electricity tariffs from uh, by 30% for industry, by 25% for commercial consumers, and by 17.5% for residential uh, consumers. These were all intended to reduce the burden of the cost of electricity on consumers, particularly industry. I mean, industry has to produce cheaper goods for, for the rest of the economy. When, when cost of electricity is high, uh, goods produced are also inflationary. And so to be able to address this effect, we needed to reduce, uh, although it was very expensive for government to do, but government thought that was the right decision to, to make in order to ensure that we reduce the burden of high cost of electricity on the people of Ghana. Our friends on the other side, uh, they ridiculed us. They said it was not possible. 
They even were worried uh, why we were reducing tariffs. They didn't want us to do that. They didn't want the people of Ghana to enjoy cheaper uh, electricity. And this was what my, my friend said, uh, Edward Bauer. The tariff reduction could take us back to Doomsaw. I want to let the NDC know that we haven't gone back to Doomsaw since the reduction in the electricity tariffs. On excess take, take or pay, uh, we had to reduce and renegotiate existing contracts to reduce the burden on the economy. I just talked about the amount of money we have to pay annually for capacity we are not using. We have, for example, renegotiated the Senate uh, contract, which has saved us 31% of the cost of power they, they have to produce. And, 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 and also, we have been able to convert it from take or pay to take and pay uh, contract which means that if we don't use it, we don't pay for it. We pay for it only when we use it. Negotiation is ongoing on other plans so that we could replicate what we've done with Senate with other I I IPPs in order to reduce the burden on the national pairs. Then we also have placed complete moratorium on the signing of new petro uh, power purchase agreements. We won't sign new power contracts until we are able to exhaust what was left at the excess that, that, that we are confronted with. We have renegotiated the gas price so that we could further reduce the cost of electricity on, on consumers. Gas price at $8.8 uh, per, per million BTU is certainly unaffordable. We have been able to negotiate, very difficult to negotiate because uh, some of these commitments are long-term commitments, but we managed to negotiate the price from $8.8 .8 per million BTU to $6.08 uh, per, per, per million BTU. And so gas as an input cost, you know, needs to be looked at all the time. Otherwise, if it is going to be higher and unaffordable, it's a pass-through cost. It means that electricity uh, will also be uh, expensive. And once electricity is expensive, you cannot build an energy economy because everything depends on electricity. It's the, engine for the, it's the, it's the fuel for the engine of the economy. Then also, we've restored the price of Jubilee gas to zero from three. Even though Jubilee gas was supposed to be free for Ghanaians to enjoy, the NDC government imposed a tariff a tariff of $3 per million BTU for Ghanaians to pay. It was supposed to be free. We have decided to give it to Ghanaians for free, and that is what the government of President Akufado has done. All these have contributed to reducing the cost, the high cost of electricity, which we, we inherited from, from the NDC. There are other achievements we have chalked, such as the renewables. We said we we're going to increase the proportion of renewables in the, in the generation mix. And when we um, said that we were going to establish um, uh, uh, solar farms in the northern uh, region, uh, my friends on the other side uh, said it was not going to be possible. For example, my friend Ablakwa, uh, when he was exposing, supposedly exposing uh, MPP's failures on the energy sector, uh, quoted what we had in our manifesto, uh, what we promised to, to do in terms of building uh, solar farms in the north. This was what he said, and I'm taking this from his presentation, that there is no evidence that this promise has been fulfilled. Beyond cutting sod for two solar facilities in the Upper West Region, earlier this year, the sites for the two projects in Kalio and Laura have been gathering grass. The only notable solar energy project is the two-megawatt Navrongo solar power plant built under President Mahama by the Volta River Authority in 2013. In fact, President Mahama didn't build that plan to, 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 to set the record straight. And secondly, as I just showed you, His Excellency President Akufado commissioned the LoRa project. <laughs> we are currently benefiting from that. The project side that was supposed to be gathering uh, uh, grass, <laughs> which according to the NDC did not exist, was commissioned only three, three months a ago. And so uh, you now can, can decipher the, the truth from falsehood so that you are able to uh, take informed decisions as to who is telling the people of, of Ghana the truth. Then also, uh, COVID. COVID is affecting everywhere. The whole world is under the heavy weight of COVID. We are lucky in Ghana. The effect hasn't been so much compared to what we are seeing in the United States of America and Europe. But the effect on the economy has been great. Because of the lockdowns, you know, industry, people are not able to go to work, the effect on the economy is, is great. And therefore, we had to respond as a current government. 
this is the reason why the president decided to uh, uh, give Ghanaians free electricity and water. Free electricity for lifeline consumers and then 50% uh, rebate, 50% reduction in electricity for non-lifeline uh, uh, consumers. It takes a caring leader to uh, want to reduce the burden of, of COVID, you know, which we do not have control over. To, 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 to the people of, 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 our, of our country. If, if, if our president wasn't caring enough, uh, I'm, I'm sure he was not going to be able to, to do that, um, such as what other presidents could not do during Ebola you know, and other uh, uh, health crises that we, we went through as a country. And so we continue to enjoy the, the relief. This is not to say that we are just interested in giving free things, but we think that government must intervene when situations get out of control. And this is one of the clear interventions our government had to do. To do. It's a costly intervention, but it is necessary in order to uh, bring the economy back and support small-scale industries and support uh, big industries to recover so that our economy can recover and grow uh, at accelerated levels. On the petroleum side, uh, we came to meet uh, other challenges, heavily indebted and collapsing tall a heavily indebted and collapsing boss, contrary to what uh, President Mahama said recently, that they handed over a profitable tour and boss to us. The statistics will show that they did not hand over profitable tour and boss to us. In any case, how did they determine that these companies uh, made profits? Because they had not conducted uh, audit on, on those companies from 2013 to 2016. No single audit was, was conducted on the accounts of these companies. So you wonder what accounting standards governed the, the operations of those companies, uh, leading to what they call uh, uh, profitable uh, uh, companies. Then also, uh, inactivity in the upstream space. Inactivity in the upstream space to mean that there was no drilling. In fact, during that time, there was no single drilling uh, rig in Ghana. And so if you don't drill, how do you build an industry? The success of the oil industry is drilling, because if you don't drill, you will not make discoveries. You will not even understand the, 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 the geology you know, of the area, much more to determine where to go and, and find the oil. And so our oil industry was collapsing you know, on, on us, but for the uh, timely uh, 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 intervention of the MPP government, we now can see hope that our industry is going to survive and, and grow. So inactivity in the upstream space, low level of skilled manpower upstream, then also poor quality of petroleum products uh, on, the, on the market. In terms of BOST, BOST uh, products not accounted for by BOST from East BDCs was 35 million U.S. dollars between 2010 and 2014. We came to meet this, and the BDCs are here. Uh, you can testify to this. You have them on your books. You know. Then the second issue was the, the debts. Um, boss owed his suppliers and BDCs, amounting to 624 million U.S. dollars. And then also about 459 million Ghana cities operational losses from BOST. And we found this after the audits were conducted on their accounts. This is the loss that we discovered after audits were conducted on those accounts. And so we have the audit documents that people can go and check. But they also should tell us what audited accounts led to the profitable uh, companies that they handed over to us. You know. And so um, on, on the issue of TOR, we had the same problems. And audited accounts from 2013 to 2016 at the time they left office. How could TOR be profitable at the time they left uh, our, our government? You know. What was the basis for that profitability? We didn't come and see any profit. Rather, we came and, and, and saw debts. For example, outstanding debts of 345 million U.S. dollars were found on the books of Tor. If that existed, what profit did did did, did Tor make? How did they account for for this uh, outstanding uh, 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 debt? Then we also had about one billion Ghana cities owed to third parties and traders and financial institutions. We found that also on their books. Statutory liabilities owed to GRA and SNIT. 84 million and 11 million Ghana cities, respectively. And they also, more importantly, they failed to undertake three cycles of critical turnaround maintenance since 2009. And this was why when we came, TOR could not function. TOR was virtually shut down. Because the furnace, as a result of lack of maintenance, 
had to explode at some point and thereby reduce the nameplate capacity of, uh, of Tor from 45,000 uh, barrels per stream day to 25,000 barrels per, per stream day. So we did not take uh, over profitable uh, boss. Neither did we take over profitable uh, at all, as the, 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 the documents, uh, the official documents show. In terms of inactivity in the upstream, I'm sure some of my colleagues here know this fact. Between 2013 and 2016, 13 petroleum agreements were signed by the NDC. These companies, the companies that signed the agreement with the government, were supposed to drill 14 wells during that period. At the end of 2016, when they left government, not a single well was drilled. Not a single well of the 14 wells. They were supposed to spend 890 million US dollars over the drilling campaigns. At the time they left office, only 15 million dollars was spent. And so 800 plus you know, spending did not occur. Part of which certainly would have been spent in Ghana and would have contributed to uh, the, 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 the growth of, of, of our economy. This did not happen. And so when we came in, we found an oil industry that was collapsing. They blame it on it loss. They said because of it loss, you know, they couldn't uh, do uh, anything. All contracts were frozen. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. It loss affected just five petroleum agreements. Five petroleum agreements. And therefore, activities over those agreements were frozen. But we had eight other petroleum agreements that were, that were active and not affected by it loss. Why didn't they drill? Okay. Then we had also some promises that we made to address the, the challenges in the, in the sector. We promised to create an enabling environment using fiscal and non-fiscal tools to attract investment, to set up the accelerated oil and gas capacity program as a vehicle for addressing the poor skilled manpower that we, we inherited, as a result of which we lost many opportunities. The development of Jubilee uh, 10 and the Sankofa did not offer us as many opportunities as we, we should have because we didn't train our people. The, the jobs are... The jobs are during the development stage of, of these blocks, of these fields. But because we didn't train our people, we, we did not take advantage of the opportunity they, they, they offered us. We also promised to develop a petroleum hub in the western region to improve skills development for upstream industry. We promised to revamp TOR and BOST to redeem our obligations, government debt obligations to BDCs, then also to increase quality of petroleum products uh, by reviewing sulfur the sulfur levels in, in petroleum products. These are some of what we have done. On the attraction of investment, uh, I'm sure those in the upstream industry know that drilling activity increased with the coming in of Aka Energy. Subsequently, Eni and Springfield are also drilled, and they all made significant oil fines. If they did not drill, they will not make the fine. This is why I said that the success of this industry depends on drilling. And so when you have four years of inactivity, then how do you grow the industry? And so between the NDC and us, you can tell who is able to grow the upstream oil and gas industry. Jubilee Partners also drilled new, new wells during uh, the, the, the period. In terms of the petroleum hub, the land has been acquired, and then Parliament has passed the Petroleum Hub Corporation Act, which will set up the agency that will oversee the development and management of the, of the petroleum hub. Area. In terms of BOST, uh, BOST has uh, completed the audit that the NDC did not do. They, they've done all those audits and they are still doing audits for the last two years. Then Bolga Depot, which was abandoned, has been recommissioned and is going to be our export base. All petroleum products bound for the sub-region, uh, the Sahelian countries, will now take their source from the depot in Bolga. That has been recommissioned. Then also... Uh, we, are, we are on our way to declaring a profit, and the audited accounts will show uh, in, in, in due course. In terms of TOR, TOR has cleared outstanding 1 billion Ghana cities debt, accrued between 2013 and 2016. A further $67 million uh, dollars has, been, uh, has been absorbed by government. 
Thor has successfully carried out the long overdue shutdown maintenance, which the NDC government three times failed to, to do, uh, leading to the shutdown of the, of the company. And then they also have been able to process up to 8 million barrels of crude oil since September 20, 2019. So the company that was shut down, which we are told was profitable, uh, unfortunately, only came back operating during our time as a result of the, the critical interventions that, that we made. In terms of the MPA's uh, um, work on the quality of petroleum products, we industry people know that the quality has improved, the sulfur levels uh, have reduced by law uh, and by regulation from 3,000 parts per meter to uh, 50 uh, parts per, per, per meter. This was a commitment we, we really believed will help in also addressing environmental challenges associated with the, the, the products that we had before. And then also we have cleared about one billion US dollar uh, BDC debt. The accelerator oil and gas capacity program is also ongoing. It's been set up and is doing wonders. People are being trained in Ghana and abroad, uh, including teachers. Teachers in technical you know, schools are being sent abroad for training, advanced training, so that we can be able to step up our work, uh, particularly in the area of fabrications, uh, installations, and, and construction, where the bulk of the money spent in the industry go. For example, in Nigeria, um, they spend up to 12 billion uh, U.S. dollars annually on, in these areas. And so if you are able to retain just 10% of that you know, in your country, that, that could mean substantial contribution to the economy. And so our strategy is not business as usual, but to consciously develop the capacity along uh, these areas that I, I talked about so we can capture as much value as we, we could from the, 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 the development of the industry. And then we have agreed with Aker Energy in negotiating their plan of development that when the project starts, we will have increased uh, local fabrication installation and so that we can use the skills that we are acquiring, uh, both at the level of employment, but also at the company level, companies that will set up fabrication companies to do local fabrications in Ghana. Improving transparency, develop the petroleum register and publish all existing petroleum agreements. We develop regulations for the implementation of the competitive bidding process, and we've done the first licensing round uh, in, in Ghana. And then we also have uh, developed regulations uh, that require the disclosure of beneficial ownership information by companies that are applying for uh, oil, oil blocks in, in the country. Now, securing the future. What is the future? And as I indicated, I've given you specific promises we made in 2016 and the extent to which we have, we have delivered on those promises. And, and government is continuing. We want to consolidate our gains. We want to continue to implement the good policies that we, we started. The fact that there is going to be election and a change of government, hopefully President Akufado will win again, does not mean that we should throw away the good policies we are, we are implementing. We will continue to implement these good policies to consolidate our gains. And so uh, looking into the future, we will continue to build critical infrastructure for the energy industry to reduce distribution losses, to improve reliability in power supply, and to increase power and natural gas exports to the sub-region. We will continue to address the issue of high cost of power, particularly for, for industry. We will, continue, we will enforce, henceforth, competitive procurement of power projects. This is what we can use to reduce the, the signing of many contracts you know, that led to the excess capacity that is on, 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 our, on, on our hand uh, today as a, as a country. We are struggling to deal with it. We're paying 500 million U.S. dollars annually for power we are not using. We think that this is because of unsolicited projects that were brought uh, are forth and the government uh, readily accepted them and signed those contracts. So we will not do that any longer. We are going to sign power purchase agreements based on need and based on competitive bidding so that we will get uh, a value for money and we will also ensure that we get power only when we, we need it as a, as a country. We also will continue to um, uh, pursue our plan to develop Ghana into a regional petroleum hub in the western region. I've already mentioned that the law establishing the, the corporation, the agency that will uh, uh, um, you know, develop the, the, the hub has been passed by, by parliament. 
we will continue to apply open and competitive bidding processes for the allocation of oil blocks. We do direct negotiation uh, sometimes, but as much as possible, we will want to use open and competitive uh, bidding for most of the, the, the blocks that we allocate to, to companies. And then we will pursue relevant reforms in the upstream petroleum sector. The COVID has affected the industry so heavily, and therefore the industry is not going to be the same when COVID is gone. We are prepared. We are forward-looking. And we have a number of reforms that we will pursue, including incentives that we need to give to companies who want to come into Ghana so that we can recover as much as we can the oil that we find in the ground. And so these reforms will be, will be pursued to revive exploration activity after, after COVID. Exploration has gone down because of COVID. People have canceled projects. People have postponed uh, their projects. We need to be able to get them back to do exploration because it's only through exploration that we can drill. It's only through drilling that we can make discoveries. And it's only through discoveries that we can produce oil. And it's only when we produce oil that we can get the oil money coming to complement our tax money to support the growth and development of our economy. So I want to thank you. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, we will discuss your questions uh, so that uh, we'll provide clarity uh, to in, ensure that you, you, you take inform, you make informed decisions as we go towards uh, uh, the, the election. Uh, so we will emerge uh, victorious in the election with our president, uh, President Akufuado, to continue to, go, to do the good job he's doing and then the majority of uh, members of parliament are from our side to support him with the legislation uh, that, that will inspire uh, the work that he's doing. I thank you very much. May God bless us all.